Hi, this is Gordon Parker from Michigan Tech, and in this video I'm just going to do a quick introduction to stability. So first let's talk about the motivation. It's arguable that stability is the most important topic in controls, and let's just consider a block diagram of a closed loop system actually let me leave it in this form first where I just have some reference input R it goes through a controller there and then it goes into the plant G let's say the plant and the controller are nice well-behaved beautiful systems that could never go what we call unstable no matter what kind of R I put into them if I simply do this I grab the output Y and I feed it back into the um, reference input R and I create an error signal that is now operated on by the controller and that generates an input U to the plant. Now I have the potential for making that beautifully uh, stable well-behaved system unstable. And what I mean by unstable is in the time domain I could have R so I'll show both R and Y here. I could have R be a unit step, a nice bounded input, but the output Y could do something like this. Wildly unstable, in this case oscillatory and uh, growing without bound. So you always, and I'll write this down, always check stability when doing control system design. That's an S. So always check stability. So we need a couple things. We need some definitions of what stability is, and then we also need some ways to check it. So the kind of stability that we're going to look at here is called uh, BIBO stability, and this stands for bounded input uh, bounded output concept's pretty straightforward. It just says that a system has this feature, BIBO stability, if for all bounded inputs, any bounded input, the output will be bounded. So it's an inherent feature of the system. So if someone says my system is BIBO stable, it means that you can give it any bounded reference input and the output will be bounded. Here's a couple examples of what I mean by a bounded input, and I'll call it R. Certainly a step is a bounded input, but if it was more interesting, like that, um, you know, that's a bounded input. It's bounded by that dashed line that I drew at the beginning. A sine wave, cosine wave, is bounded. So if our input was that, it's bounded. Now, let's come up with a few checks for bounded stability, or uh, BIBO stability. Before we do that, um, and of course we're looking at linear systems, so we can have a transfer function, which is an output Y over some input U or R, like I was using in the previous notes, previous pages. And let's say that we write that as some numerator function of S divided by a denominator of a function of s. And I'll use f of s for that, and that's a typical notation for the characteristic equation. The characteristic equation. And really what the characteristic equation is, is it's the denominator of normally a closed loop transfer function, but it could be any transfer function. But here, we're really focusing on the closed-loop transfer functions. Okay. So there we go. The denominator of some closed-loop transfer function. And for a system to be BIBO stable, what has to happen is all the roots of that characteristic equation have to be in the left half plane. So notice I'm not including the imaginary axis here. So if all the roots of the characteristic equation, all the poles, right, because that's the same thing, the poles, 
of a transfer function are the roots of the characteristic, characteristic equation. If all those poles are in the left half plane, then the system is Bebo stable. goes the other way too for a linear system. If the system is Bebo stable, you know that all the poles are in the left half plane. None on the imaginary axis and none on the right half plane. So let's look at an example. Let's say that we had some transfer function, closed loop, why not? 3s minus 2 over s plus 4, s plus 5. We have a single zero in the right half plane at z or uh, s equal 2. And then for our poles, we have a couple of those. We have one at negative 4, I'll call it p1, and we have another one at negative 5. They're all in the left half plane. We have a zero over here, but then we have a couple poles here. We're only concerned about the poles, and they're in the left half plane, so we know that that system is stable. We'll just say Bebo stable, but stable. Let's look at another example. How about y over u? It looks like a v, but I guess it really doesn't matter if it's a u or a v, but uh, I intended it to be a u. How about that one? If we make the pole zero diagram of it, we have a pole at the origin and then one at negative two. A pole at negative two and a pole at zero. That is unstable. That is not a stable system. It is not Bebo stable. And the reason is, is that there does exist a bounded input that will make that output unbounded. And it's pretty easy to see what it is. If I let u equal a step, then y is equal to this. If we do a quick partial fraction expansion on that, we'll get c1 over s squared plus c2 over s in general plus c3 over s plus 2. That's a decaying exponential. It's bounded. That's a step-like thing. That's bounded. This is a ramp. Unbounded. So there is a very particular input that will make this system have an unbounded output, and that is a unit step. Now we didn't have to know that it would be a unit step that would make this system unbounded. All we know is that the system is unstable in general because all of its poles are not in the left half plane and that there is an input that will make it go unstable. The last thing we're going to do is explore a couple checks for stability. Let's say as a motivating, motivating example that we have this, some numerator n of s and some characteristic equation fourth order. Maybe this is a closed loop transfer function. If we want to check the stability of this, the Bebo stability of this system, we would have to solve for the roots of the characteristic equation. Get its roots and make sure that they're all in the left half plane, or at least evaluate those roots. Well, one way to do that is to bring it into a, you know, a calculator that can do this, or MATLAB. You could, in MATLAB, you could use the roots command and give it as an argument, 1, space 2, space 3, space 7, space 10, and boom, it'll tell you the roots. And then you can easily check if it's unstable. You could also use the uh, PZ, PZ map command and make a pole zero diagram. Um, but there are some quick ways that you can use to determine if it might be, or to determine if it is unstable. And here they are. These are some, I guess this would be the, the first line of defense when checking stability. So if you have some control system, first you'd want to form the closed loop transfer function. Then, what you can do is, is, if any coefficients of the characteristic equation, that's the denominator, are zero, then the system is unstable. 
You don't know where the poles are, but you know that there will be poles outside of the left half plane. Furthermore, if there are any, or I should say, if there are any sign changes in the coefficients of the characteristic equation, then again, the system is unstable. So let's look at a couple examples. Let's say we had uh, g of s is this, 4 times s plus 2 over s cubed plus 3s plus 5. So our characteristic equation is s cubed plus 0 s squared plus 3s plus 5. Because of that, we know that this system is unstable. Another example, if we had g of s, we'll use the same numerator, 4s plus 2 over s cubed plus, let's say, 2s squared minus 3s plus 5. Because of this, we have a sign change in these coefficients between the 2 and the 5. We know that this system is unstable. And if you went ahead and checked the roots of these, you would find that they are not all in the left half plane. So that's great, but that is not going to solve the original problem that we looked at on the previous slide. Remember, that was y over u equals n over s over s to the fourth plus 2s cubed plus 3s squared plus 7s plus 10. If we look at this characteristic equation, it has all the coefficients, there are no zero coefficients, and there are no sign changes. Is it unstable? Who knows? We would have to use something like MATLAB or some calculator to check the roots. Or we could use a very interesting method that we'll cover in another uh, video called the Routh Array. And once you construct the Routh array, you can visually inspect it and determine if the system is stable or not. Now this is a very interesting technique, and when you look at it, you might say, well, why would you do that? Why not just use a root solver? And here's the reason why. Let's say you have this example. Here's our control system, k over s plus 2. And here's our plant, 42 over s plus 1, s plus 5. And we have this feedback path here. Now, there, everything is known here except for this parameter, k. And how about this question? What is the range of k? What is the range of k? Oops, of k such that the system is stable. Well, you could, using a root solver, you could just try all possible values of k that are of interest to you and check the roots. That's a little bit uh, cumbersome. And instead, we can use this Routh array to actually get right to the answer to that question. It'll tell us exactly what the range of k is for that system to be stable. And this is the kind of check that you'd want to do when you're doing closed loop control design. You may come up with a wonderful control system, um, but if you're very close to instability because of how you picked k, then you may want to reconsider that because if there's any changes in the physical plant compared to what you thought it was, that value of k that you chose could drive it unstable. So again, this is Gordon Parker from Michigan Tech, and thanks for watching.